Oh, this is going to be a weird one. All right, everybody, today we're going all the way back to 1972 to look at a little extremely forgotten kind of gem. Daughters of Satan! Whatever, it is what it is. But before we go any further, before we dig into this thing anymore, before we tear it apart from top to bottom, you know the routine, once again and as always. To the trailer! Daughters of Satan, now revealed on the screen for the first time. A secret cult of lust-crazed witches, torturing their victims with fire and desire. Daughters of Satan, an ancient painting with the horrifying power to transform an innocent young girl into an insatiable she-devil. It's horror that's guaranteed to make your blood scream and your mind creep. All right, this motion picture was directed by Hollingsworth Morse. Does that not sound like a bad guy from a James Bond movie? Basically, he's done a whole lot of TV directing. We're talking about he did stuff like F Troop. He did uh, Mikhail's Navy and uh, The Rounders and Flipper and Riverboat and Zorro, and the adventures of Jim Bowie, if anybody remembers that, and the Dukes of Hazard, and the Fall Guy. So you've seen his work before. His name is not going to jump out at you, although once you've heard it, you'll probably never unhear it again. All right, playing James Robertson, Tom Selleck. What do you think about that? We haven't talked about him since I did Runaway way back in the day. Let's go. Let's get down the list. We're talking he was in Midway. He was in Coma. He was in Three Men and a Baby. In Lassiter. In the very, very underrated High Road to China. In Her Alibi and Quigley Down Under. In An Innocent Man. And let's get real. He was on TV too. Friends. The Closer. Boston Legal. Blue Bloods. But let's face reality. He's either going to be Jesse Stone and all those flicks to some people, but really he's always going to be Magnum P.I. to the masses. It's just the way it was, folks. He was kind of a cultural icon at the time. Back in the merry old day of the 80s when the world was fun and enjoyable, yes, Tom Selleck, TV megastar. Playing Chris Robertson, Barra Grant. Basically TV and TV movies, but we'll go through some of the lists. We're talking about she was in little things like Barnaby Jones and Gunsmoke. In the Mary Tyler Moore Show, in Love, American Style, but you don't remember that one. And Sunshine Boys, and Trapped Beneath the Sea, and she even popped up in a big movie like, you know, uh, Mother Jugs and Speed, and stuff like that. And she did some writing, she did some writing for TV and whatnot. But, is what it is, as was it was, she was in this, that's all we care about. Playing Kitty, purr purr, Tiny Guthrie. Eh, it doesn't jump out at you, I don't blame you. Here we go. We're talking about she was in stuff like The Thirsty Dead, and The Postman Always Rings Twice, and Bound for Glory, anybody remembers that? And TV, too, you know, Canon, Room 222, Emergency, The High Chaparral, uh, Medical Center, Bonanza, Adam 12, Dragnet, all that kind of stuff. So she was around, she was in the game, she was working, not going to be somebody that jumps off the screen and you say, hey, I know her, but she was there. Playing Carlos Ching, Vic Diaz. Oh, B-movie extraordinaire. Let's go down memory lane, folks. We're talking about he was in little things like Beyond Atlantis, A Taste of Hell, The Big Bird Cage, Night of the Cobra Woman, The Losers, The Ravagers, Bloodthirst, uh, Cover Girl Models, Black Mama, White Mama, Vampire Hookers, Super Beast. So this guy was in a bunch of shit, and you've got to love every second of it. Playing Dr. Dangle, Vic Cillian. Let's do this thing. We're talking about he was in Little Motion Pictures like Night of the Cobra Woman, and Bloodthirst, and the Sky Divers, and the Combat Killers, and Dragnet, and South Seas, and Master Samurai, and the Magic Curse, 
and she's too hot to handle, and of the flesh. So, see, he's got a pretty big career, man. It wasn't a lot of shit. Let's keep moving. And playing the housekeeper, Para Luban. You know, she did some work over there in the Philippines. She was in some stuff. I can't pronounce half the words anyway, but she was in things like Good Morning Professor and Highway 54 and a bunch of things I'm not going to even, I don't want to be disrespectful and butcher the names of the movies, but she was around. She was in some stuff. She's in this. Did a good job. And this is the way it goes. Let's get going to the story. Okay, everybody, I'm going to try to do this in 90 seconds or less so I can keep it fast, keep it short, keep it moving, keep it entertaining so we can get to where we would much rather be. The summation. This movie is a little bit weird, so I'm going to really fly through it and just try to hit the points, I guess, of interest so we can get to the summation. Anyway, the movie starts out. There's this woman. She's being tortured. She's being whipped. She's being hung above a bunch of spikes. And there's this woman who we later find out is Kitty. And she's whipping her, torturing her, trying to make the woman submit. Submit to what? Well, she wants her to say the seven names or bowels or whatever the fuck it was to Satan himself. Well, the woman isn't really into it at first, but, you know, a couple of spikes go through her feet. She starts catching some whips. She's like, okay, I'll spit the shit out. That scene ends. Next thing you know, we pick up with Tom Selleck. He's a curator for a museum, and he happens to be out driving around looking at shit one day. And when he comes across this painting in a shop of three witches being burned at the stake, with their dog, can't forget Fido, he is freaked out by how much the woman looks like his wife. It blows his mind. It boggles his brain. It is what it is. So he buys it and he brings it back home. His wife sees it. She's disgusted by it. She doesn't like it. She's really weirded out. But she starts spitting out facts about this painting that there's no way she could know. The time, the history, when it took place. And he's like, wow, this is a little bit weird. How does my wife know this? She doesn't know how she knows this. Well, Movie moves on. Next thing you know, they have a housekeeper show up. Hmm. Well, it's a little bit odd, but finds out that she's one of the women in the painting, too. The wife doesn't really like that and asks her to leave. And the woman says, no, 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 no. I am going to be here to help guide you to your destiny. And shows her a big knife. Well, this can't bode well. Then more weird things start happening. Before you know it, the wife starts doing little things to sabotage Tom Selleck. And before you know it, he goes back to this one place because, hey, the creature from the goddamn painting, that big Roddy, he's now living in the man's front yard. Is what it is. He goes around looking for the owner of Nicodemus, according to its collar. And before you know it, he finds the man that sold the painting stabbed through the chest. Anyway, he runs out of there. He's buying chased by people. He's being ran all over town, but he gets away. And in the middle of all this, the only thing you can think of is, maybe I should go see that psychiatrist that the family knows. And, well... I just don't believe all this stuff is really happening. Oh, I believe it, but maybe I'm crazy. So he goes to a psychiatrist. Psychiatrist is the only person who actually sits there and understands it. Tom Selleck says, this can't be happening. The psychiatrist goes, oh no, it's happening. It's real. It's real. And your wife and all these people, they're being possessed or coveted. And there's these witches from years ago coming to this day and age, whatever. Finally, long story short, we find out by a very topless woman that Tom Selleck is the great, 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 great descendant of the conquistador who actually burned those three witches at the stake. And now everybody in his bloodline has died an early death. And yes, it is his turn. Well, that's the gist of it, everybody. I can go down the 15 little side roads and also look at a goofy shit, but you get it. Dead witches come back to torture a family member of some guy that died fucking 400 years ago. It is what it is. You get the idea. Let's get to the summation. All right, everybody. Does this motion picture work? Well, kind of, I guess, maybe, sort of. Well, let's break down the first big three before we start to get into the nitty gritty. The directing, it actually looks fairly decent. Keep in mind when I say directing, I'm talking about the way they shot the film, the way they framed the scenes, the scenery, the beauty of it, how they captured that with the camera. I'm not saying it's going to have a plot. I'm not going to say it's going to have a coherent story. I'm just saying the director did a fairly decent job shooting this. Yeah, it looks like a glorified TV movie with a whole bunch of boobs to make you realize it isn't, but it looks good. It looks decent. It is what it is. Let's move on. The writing? For this kind of motion picture, it's not that bad. Some of the conversations are actually kind of pretty cool. Again, don't look for logic. Don't look for anything like that. But the words coming out of people's mouths as they examine this back and forth, 
isn't too strikingly bad and it isn't too horrible. So it's adequate. And the acting, well, you know, some of the people in here actually do. Okay, Tom Selleck, he actually kind of sells it. You know what I mean? Kitty is kind of cool because she's actually at one moment really evil. And then when she comes out of this trance and this haze, which we'll get to, she actually plays it off like, how did I get here? I don't, and, you, and you kind of believe her acting job in it. So some of the acting is great. Some of it is what it is and a little bit wouldn't. But again, it's not hit, not miss, but it doesn't suck. So where does that leave us as I was talking about a minute ago? We have a motion picture that is actually acted fairly well. Written okay. Shot surprisingly good for the kind of motion picture that it is. And yet, you sit there at the end of it and go, what the hell was this all about? I mean, yes, it's a guy getting his comeuppance, whatever, from these three witches, whatever. But the whole story is so convoluted and so weird and it breaks its own line of logic so many times that you're like, you just broke a rule that you set up. Wait a minute, is everything not what I think, or are you guys just being really shitty storytellers? It's that kind of thing. Like, everybody, as they're taking over the soul of one of these people, or one of these fucking whatever they are, the three women in the painting, the woman in the painting will disappear. As it's taking over the body of the living woman, which is, I don't know if it's a descendant, just a lookalike, who the hell knows? They don't really explain it. It is what it is. But, as they're in taking over, possessing the person's body, the picture, it fades. Their picture fades out of the painting. Usually. But then there's moments again when the person will be standing there, evil and possessed, looking at the goddamn picture on the wall, and they're in it. So you're like, what is going on? I don't understand. And the fact that Tom Selleck has seen all this crazy shit taking place around him, and yet he's constantly sitting there saying to himself, hmm, that's weird. Huh, that's odd. And the only person who just dives in fucking head first into believing this shit is the fucking psychiatrist? Really? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And then, when the psychiatrist is shown that the painting is alive, when the psychiatrist sees that the painting really is possessed like he thought it was, or whatever the hell is going on with it, does he say anything to Tom Selleck? No. He just says, hey man, good night. I'll talk to you tomorrow. So that's where the problem of this motion picture is. There's so many times in it where you're like, people aren't acting in a rational way. They're not conducting themselves in any kind of normalcy. And then throw in the leaps of logic, the rules that it breaks about its own motion picture, and the world that it keeps throwing off kilter without anybody reacting to it. How many times this motion picture, go watch it, are you gonna see somebody watch something just disappear? right in front of their very eyes. You're gonna see all these like banditos hanging out in, in, the, in his backyard at one point, and you're like, what the fuck did that, what's even going on? It, it logically does not make any sense whatsoever. And in a storytelling narrative, it's barely cohesive. I guess if you fill in some of the blanks in your head and forgive some of the mistakes, you can kind of make it work as a logical motion picture. But you grant them a lot of leeway. And you're just not and saying, well, it is what it is. Now all that said, all that is done, all that is out of the way. Am I recommending this motion picture? Yeah, why not? It's out there. You can watch it like streaming on friggin' video services for free or Amazon Prime or whatever it is. Who knows, who cares? It's worth it just for the fun of it. It's a good little semi-okay witch movie. You know what I mean? You could throw this in one night and then like throw in Devil Dog the Hound from Hell and maybe throw on a, the car and you got yourself a little triple feature of fun 70s possession ghost whatever movies that don't require a whole lot of fucking thinking. But you can just veg out for a while and enjoy them and take them for what it is. It's fun. You get to see Tom Selleck when he was really young in a motion picture and See how he did in it? He actually did all right. If you want to see all the lead women of a motion picture do topless scenes, I guess this thing will rock too because, hey, that takes place. I mean, every time you turn around, there's a pair of tits flopping up. Ooh, flopping, that's a bad fucking choice of words. Just don't expect too much. Just don't look for anything memorable. 
And you can be easily amused for 91 minutes with this little 70s goofy witch movie. Which shows you some beautiful scenery of the Philippines, by the way. Which is kind of cool and different just for that. All right, everybody. Once and again, be good. Take care. Stay out of trouble. Be kind to a stranger. Always take care of a friend. And above all else, no matter what, under no circumstances, ever, and I mean ever, take any bullshit from anybody. See you soon.